Chapter 3, Section 2, Energy Flow At the core of every organism's interaction with the environment is its need for energy to power life's processes. Consider, for example, the energy that ants use to carry objects many times their size or the energy that birds use to migrate thousands of miles. Think about the energy that you need to get out of bed in the morning. The flow of energy through an ecosystem is one of the most important factors that determines the system's capacity to sustain life. Producers. Without a constant input of energy, living systems cannot function. Sunlight is the main energy source for life on Earth. Of all the sun's energy that reaches Earth's surface, only a small amount, less than 1%, is used by living things. This seemingly small amount is enough to produce as much as 3.5 kilograms of living tissue per square meter a year in some tropical rainforests. In a few ecosystems, some organisms obtain energy from a source other than sunlight. Some type of organisms rely on energy stored in inorganic chemical compounds. For instance, mineral water that flows underground or boils out of hot springs and under sea vents is loaded with chemical energy. Only plants and some algae and certain bacteria can capture energy from the sunlight or chemicals and use that energy to produce food. These organisms are called autotrophs. Autotrophs use energy from the environment to fuel the assembly of simple inorganic compounds into complex organic molecules. These organic molecules combine and recombine to produce living tissue. Because they make their own food, autotrophs, like the kelp in figure 3-4, are also called producers. Both types of producers, those that capture energy from sunlight and those that capture chemical energy, are essential to flow of energy through a biosphere. Energy from the sun. The best known autotrophs are those that harness solar energy through a process known as photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, These autotrophs use light energy to power chemical reactions that convert carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and energy-rich carbohydrates such as sugars and starches. This process, shown in figure 3-5, is responsible for adding oxygen to and removing carbon dioxide from the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, Were it not for photosynthetic autotrophs, the air would not contain enough oxygen for you to breathe. On land, plants are the main autotrophs. In freshwater ecosystems and in the sunlit upper layers of the ocean, algae are the main autotrophs. Photosynthetic bacteria, the most common of which are the cyanobacteria, are important in certain wet ecosystems such as tidal flats and salt marshes. Life without light. Although plants are the most visible and best known autotrophs, some autotrophs can produce food in the absence of light. Such autotrophs rely on energy within the chemical bonds of inorganic molecules such as hydrogen sulfide. When organisms use chemical energy to produce carbohydrates, the process is called chemosynthesis. This process is performed by several types of bacteria. Surprisingly, These bacteria represent a large proportion of living autotrophs. Some chemosynthetic bacteria live in very remote places on Earth, such as volcanic vents on the deep ocean floor and hot springs in Yellowstone Park. 
Others live in more common places, such as the tidal marshes along the coast. Consumers. Many organisms, including animals, fungi, and many bacteria, cannot harness energy directly from the physical environment as autotrophs do. The only way these organisms can acquire energy is from other organisms. Organisms that rely on other organisms for their energy and food supply are called heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are also called consumers. There are many different types of heterotrophs. Herbivores obtain energy by eating only plants. Some herbivores are cows, caterpillars, and deer. Carnivores, including snakes, dogs, and owls, eat animals. Humans, bears, crows, and other omnivores eat both plants and animals. Detrovores, such as mites, earthworms, snails, and crabs, feed on plant and animal remains and other dead matter, collectively called detritus. Another important group of heterotrophs called decomposers, break down organic matter. Bacteria and fungi, such as the one in figure 3-6, are decomposers. Feeding Relationships What happens to the energy in an ecosystem when one organism eats another? That energy moves along a one-way path. Energy flows through an ecosystem in one direction, from the sun or inorganic compounds to autotrophs, producers, and then to various heterotrophs, consumers. The relationships between producers and consumers connect organisms into feeding networks based on who eats whom. Food chains. The energy stored by producers can be passed through an ecosystem along a food chain. A series of steps in which organisms transfer energy by eating and being eaten. For example, in a prairie ecosystem, a food chain might consist of a producer such as grass that is fed upon by a herbivore such as a grazing antelope. The herbivore is in turn fed upon by a carnivore such as a coyote. In this situation, the carnivore is only two steps removed from the producer. In some marine food chains, such as the one in figure 3-7, the producers are microscopic algae that are eaten by very small organisms called zooplankton. The zooplankton, in turn, are eaten by small fish, such as herring. The herring are eaten by squid, which are ultimately eaten by large fish such as sharks. In this food chain, the top carnivore is four steps removed from the producer. Food webs. In most ecosystems, feeding relationships are more complex than can be shown in a food chain. Consider, for example, the relationships in a salt marsh. Although some producers, including marsh grass and other salt-tolerant plants, are eaten by water birds, grasshoppers, and other herbivores, most producers complete their life cycle, then die, and decompose. Decomposers convert the dead plant matter to detritus, which is eaten by detrovores, such as sandhoppers. The detrovores are in turn eaten by smelt and other small fish. Some of those consumers will also eat detritus directly. Add mice, large fish, and hawks to the scenario and feeding relationships can get very confusing. When the feeding relationships among the various organisms in an ecosystem form a network of complex interactions, ecologists describe these relationships as a food web. A food web links all the food chains in an ecosystem together. The food web in figure 3-8, for example, shows the feeding relationships in a salt marsh community. Trophic levels. Each step in a food chain or food web is called a trophic level. 
Producers make up the first trophic level. Consumers make up the second, third, or higher trophic levels. Each consumer depends on the trophic level below for its energy. Ecological Pyramids The amount of energy or matter in an ecosystem can be represented by an ecological pyramid. An ecological pyramid is a diagram that shows the relative amounts of energy or matter contained within each trophic level in a food chain or food web. Ecologists recognize three different types of ecological pyramids. Energy pyramids, biomass pyramids, and pyramids of numbers. Figure 3-9 shows an example of each type. Energy pyramids. Theoretically, there is no limit to the number of trophic levels that a food chain can support. But there is one hitch. Only part of the energy that is stored in one trophic level is passed on to the next level. This is because organisms use much of the energy that they consume for life processes, such as respiration, movement, and reproduction. Some of the remaining energy is released into the environment as heat. Only about 10% of the energy available within one trophic level is transferred to organisms at the next trophic level. For instance, one-tenth of the solar energy captured by grasses ends up stored in the tissues of cows and other grazers. Only one-tenth of that energy, 10% of 10%, or 1% total, is transferred to the humans that eat the cows. Thus, the more levels that exist between a producer and a top-level consumer in an ecosystem, the less energy that remains from the original amount. Biomass Pyramid The total amount of living tissue within a given trophic level is called biomass. Biomass is usually expressed in terms of grams of organic matter per unit area. A biomass pyramid represents the amount of potential food available for each trophic level in an ecosystem. Pyramid of Numbers Ecological pyramids can also be based on the number of individual organisms at each trophic level. For some ecosystems, such as the metal shown in figure 3-9 above, the shape of the pyramid of numbers is the same as that of the energy and biomass pyramids. This, however, is not always the case. In most forests, for example, there are fewer producers than there are consumers. A single tree has a large amount of energy and biomass, but it is only one organism. Many insects live in the tree, but they have less energy and biomass. Thus, a pyramid of numbers for a forest ecosystem would not resemble a typical pyramid at all.